What's going on, Doombots? Tony Skinjili here with the first MSF video of the week. This one's a little bit new and different. Uh, it's going to be the top five uh, most underrated characters. Characters that I don't think people overlook necessarily, but characters that people may ignore for a while or not invest in early or not really find a home until someone tells them, hey, use, you know, so-and-so with this character in war defense or hey i found a home for this character uh, these are characters that are pretty good both inside of a team you know whether it be a meta team or some kind of crazy war defense stuff or uh, their own team but also kind of stand out completely outside of that and uh, there's no surprise. We're just going to get right into it and start with one character that has kind of fallen by the wayside. Anyone who's been playing this game for as long as I have remembers the days of Hand Sentry being phenomenal. But you don't really see too much Hand Sentry now. And it, it's important to note that in, even in the early game, Hand Sentry is one of the better characters you can unlock or put a little bit of effort into as you progress. And it's, it's kind of simple why. He's one of the early game protectors that not only saves the entire team through a method of taunt that's peculiar. Instead of taunting, he makes sure no one else can be targeted. But he also prevents things like chaining, which normal taunts can't do. Has some level of follow-up evasion. Take a quick look if you don't know most of his kit is this one ability. Apply still to all allies, except self, for two turns. Apply evade to four allies. It's only four allies, so it's not going to bring any summon minions in. But in the very early game, into the mid game, when you still need a little bit of protection on some campaign nodes, or maybe one or two uh, Greek raid nodes you end up with a really good kit. Uh, and I can tell you that even in the Gamma Raid, I use him on the Kree nodes just to give me a little bit of a cushion around my super good Kree characters, Captain Marvel, Minerva, uh, even Ronin sometimes. I use him because one, Minerva can res him, but it also keeps them a little bit protected. So if I'm having a hard time in the Gamma Raid on the Kree hand nodes, He's the character I bring in. He's probably the best individual hand minion in what he can do. He's a mystic character, so he's very useful in the mystic campaign. And all in all, he's a really fun character to play around with. Sometimes, based on his speed and what you're going up against, he functions as a really good stealth uh, way to protect some of your weaker characters in the very early stages of the game. The fact that he applies evades... To all the allies also means that any giant AOE that would normally hit everyone is also going to miss them. And even when the stealth wears off, the next attack that would hit them is probably going to miss too. So all in all, a really good protector uh, kind of falls by the wayside as everyone starts talking about, well, he's not part of a team. Correct, but there's parts of the game that if you've been doing any U7, teams don't matter anymore even if you look at dark dimension 3 or earlier on dark dimension 2 you never really used a team there was no one team that was super confidently going to go from coast to coast and complete all the nodes it was always about picking the best characters that synergize with each other or something we like to call organic synergy versus like force synergy and and he's one of those characters that that can really lean into that Moving into another character that I think kind of has gone by the wayside. People still invest in the character, but not a lot, is Mantis. Now, a lot of people know, well, Mantis is one of those characters I can use to unlock Star Wars. Correct. She's also really good when you pair with Drax. Correct. And you might see teams with her, Drax, and Ultron on a war defense. Also hand sentry sometimes. But... I'd like to just take a moment and remind you of a couple of things about Mantis. If not for Minerva, Mantis may be the best cosmic healer in the game. Uh, as far as raid healing goes, 
her healing is is through the roof. It's absolutely phenomenal. Both empathy as the ability to heal not only adjacent characters for a ton, but everyone for a little bit less, not even much. And applying regeneration to the adjacent allies or all allies if it's in a raid. This doesn't even care if you're on the Guardians team. She's just an all-around great healer that you can use in a lot of the bio nodes in Gamma Raids or uh, as a controller in some of the challenge nodes where you know you don't have access to a healer. You can use her as a viable healer. She's a good character to have invested in and she won't necessarily let you down as you progress uh, through the game. So... While there are characters that are better, Minerva, for the most part, is well known as the better, the best raid healer in the game. And then Scientist Supreme has recently kind of taken over for one reason or another. But she still is kind of incredibly well put together as far as a kit character. Uh, very useful if you unlock her early because you're farming for Star Wars. You don't have to pivot off of her for any reason. Maybe Dark Dimension, because you're going to use Minerva on that team anyway. But Minerva is one of those characters that kind of makes every team a little bit better as that insurance policy. Mantis, with the right and proper investment, can just be an amazing healer on your Guardians team anyway. So she's a character that kind of doesn't get enough uh, face time. People kind of think like, oh, I have Mantis. I've unlocked Star Wars, and now I can leave her alone. No, you're not going to regret any investment you put into her. She's really all around a pretty decent character. Now, moving into the next character is Ronan. Um, I don't know how much I can say about Ronan. Ever since his rework, he's been kind of one of the best characters to use with the Kree minions. You can also say, like, well, he works really well with teams that are kind of thrown together with Ultimus or all of the Kree heroes. But overall... I know many people who brought Ronan in as a fifth member for their Dark Dimension 2 team, let alone their Dark Dimension 3 team, because it doesn't take much to invest in him. He is a mystic, and that's kind of a, a nice small pool of high-impact characters. And every kind of action he takes is great. You know, uh, if you don't remember, his basic can clear up to two positive defects before the attack, which means if someone has an evade, it's going to hit. It's going to clear the evade. And also the fact that the attack's unavoidable, huge anyway. Great total package basic attack, even though it doesn't hit that hard. Judgment, yes, it summons minions, but it clears two negative effects from all allies. It's basically JJ. Uh, it's JJ+, plus actually. Uh, it doesn't give out any energy, obviously, so you have that. But overall, it's a great investment. And will help you a lot. Plus, even though his summons aren't great, more bodies are more targets for big attacks. So he's not the worst. Universal weapon, I, I mean, it's an AoE attack that applies ability block to at least one person, the target, and then two random additional enemies. Obviously, the less enemies there are, the more people are going to get ability blocked. There's a little bit of a focus check issue. He doesn't have the best focus, but it's still a pretty overall good attack. Like, if, if we put it on Strife and we use Strife, like, this is clearly a better option. It hits more people. So, pretty solid kit, right? When you look at Accuser, it's whenever a character gains energy, their speed bar goes up, and they're healed. Think of all of the fun things you can do with just giving out energy to characters, let alone on the Kree team. And especially if you do have Kree characters like, I don't know, Captain Marvel or Minerva on the team, you can start throwing a ton of extra heals on turns. As a matter of fact, one of the fun things we used to do on stream was throw together the Kree Oracle Minerva Star Lord team with Ronan in the back and just look at all of the extra turns that happened as energy was thrown around and someone gained an attack and, and occasionally someone died and four people would be healed. It was kind of crazy. And all of these things kind of add up to be an overall pretty decent kit, both solo and together. So I think Ronin tends to get kind of slept on a little bit. People go like, no, nah, he's fine. He's a lot better than people give him credit for. Uh, number two is Hawkeye. Uh, I think someone may have covered this a little bit. I might have a different take, though, so bear with me on this. I think a lot of people give Hawkeye the shaft. He doesn't do a lot of damage. He doesn't really... 
do anything. He doesn't have a home. Uh, I personally use Hawkeye next to Ultron because sometimes I want to turn me to rewind. And that's kind of, I think, one of the best features of Hawkeye. The fact that he's relatively quick and has a turn one turn rewind available uh, that clears positive effects and AOE. Not many characters have an AOE buff clear. A lot of them have buff clear on basic. A lot of them have maybe a buff clear on a chain attack. But a, a AOE buff clear is kind of crazy. And you don't see it a lot because you don't really throw him around in fights often. But anywhere where you can use him, there's more than a couple of occasions where a clearing three positive effects can be huge, especially in war. So I don't ever put him on defense. I always tend to leave him on offense just to make sure that effect goes off and I get to take off buffs from someone in cargo room. I might throw him next to Ultron on a weird Ultron offense team or something like that. But this this ability might be one of the better abilities in the game that doesn't get enough attention. This doesn't necessarily mean take your Hawkeye up immediately as high as you can go because one of the things that I like to point out about all these characters are they're all more or less kit characters. You know, the only reason to invest gear into them and, and level is is to make sure they're survivable enough to be able to do the things they want to do. But a lot of them, it, it really just comes down to their kit. And this is truly a phenomenal attack that not many people have. Even Cables doesn't buff clear, you know? So this is great. Obviously, his AoE radial blind called Airburst, fine. I guess uh, it doesn't blind nearly as many people. If you're choosing the target, but you have to get behind a taunt, it's less likely. Uh, it, it, it works kind of like Thor's a ult now with the stun where sometimes it might blind somebody, but then you have to go through the resist checks. And again, he has adequate focus, but when you get to choose the target, like with his AOE dispel, it becomes a little bit more clear because you're guaranteeing to remove the buff you want to from the person. The rest of this, it's a 50% chance to hit a resist check. I don't think this is his best ability, but I do know I've been on the other side of an AI Hawkeye who's blinded my entire team twice in a row. So, eh, if you play an RNG, you'll be fine. The basic, uh, having a unavoidable... Oh, all of his attacks being unavoidable, huge buff. Can't be dodged. Absolutely amazing. And Shaun the Dark is just kind of this weird ability. Like, sometimes it's awesome. And sometimes it could be awesome and doesn't happen. So overall, I think he's a little underrated for what his kit can do, even though he's not obviously one of the god tier characters in the game. I think he, as a utility character, as a controller, as a skill character, is probably worth a pretty decent chunk of investment, even though he doesn't have a home. And that brings us to the last character, a character you may have heard me talk about once or twice, and it's Spider Miles. Uh, Spider Miles is weird right he's a part of a team but he works best when you break up another team so he's a part of the spider-verse team if you have symbiote spider-man but he works really well with green goblin but you don't want to take green goblin off of the sinister six right now because we don't have doc ock yet so where do we put miles and the end result is anywhere you want in the very early game if you unlock Miles, you actually don't really worry about the defenders. He can control the fight for the entirety of the fight. You can turn rewind Luke Cage to prevent the defense ups from going on while the rest of your team pick off the squishies like Iron Fist and Punisher. He can apply the disrupt uh, after JJ to make sure that when Luke Cage does decide to put taunt or defense up on players, it's not going to matter. His basic has the opportunity to clear a debuff if that target has defense down, which, if you weren't aware, he has a chance of placing on a character. So sometimes if it's in a 1v1 scenario, he's going to be able to clear off buffs. He has a pretty weird stealth chance. He's very survivable. Uh, he's an early game unlock. He kind of never falls off. He loses a little bit of damage and his survivability... Not great. Obviously, I'm only rocking a gear tier 10 one, but I, I honestly have never had to invest more in him. Uh, maybe that's because I have five red stars. I don't know. But I've never had to do much. He's always been 
providing for me, even from the day he came out, like almost 16 months ago, I guess. He all around one of the characters that I don't hear enough about. And I would like to tell players, if you have the chance, if you start the game or if at any point in time you notice that you have a Miles, invest in him, get him up. I'm using him on my free to play account just because he's great. And let alone the fact that uh, my free to play account happens to have Hella and CM from the events that came up. Like Miles has earned himself a spot on that team just because of the control he grants your setup. That doesn't mean you stop doing what you're doing, but if you do get lucky, pull a hundred shards of Miles out of a mega orb or you three three rip premium orbs and they just constantly give you miles. Don't feel like, oh no, this isn't working towards a goal. He's all around a great character and you'd probably regret not working that much on him. So that's it uh, for this video. I think that's, at least for my money, the five characters that I would recommend people work on if they're like, I don't know what to do because those characters each add a very unique utility that you either have to have a full team to accomplish or you may not have noticed before. And do me a favor, comment below and let me know any characters you think I might have missed. Uh, maybe number six on this list, or maybe some obvious character that, as of right now, not in lieu of any reworks that may be coming, is is truly better than people give credit for. Maybe you think Yandu is a lot better a character. I know for me in the early game, Yandu has been great, but kind of falls off unless you know something I don't. So comment below, let me know what you think. Uh, in the meantime, I want you guys to have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scangeli, and I'll catch you later.